Hey, what's going on, guys? Mike from the Rat Collectors. I'm going to start the year off by doing a room tour of my man cave in the basement. It starts off with the consoles that you can see there and my editing rig there that I use for, you know, mostly my editing and my filming area. But I'll start off with this corner over here. As you can see there, we have a Grand Theft Auto V uh, and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood posters with their, you know, respected poster pinups that you could use. Uh, I got them at Walmart for like five bucks. Uh, right there is a picture of me and my wife. We were at a wedding and there was a caricaturist uh, there and uh, they did a quick mock-up of me and my wife fighting over an arcade, basically. Uh, right there is a picture of myself and Danny, an original member of the Retro Actors and the con bravo when we were there we a few years back as you can see up here i have quite a bit of boxes um i'm kind of like a hoarder when it comes to you know console boxes uh, if i get and keep try to keep my console boxes from when i grab them so right here is a playstation one obviously beside that ps2 ps3 the ps4 because i bought it second hand i don't have a box for it but instead i have even better the sega dreamcast box there the greatness awaits uh, box there that I have like a bunch of boxes that I was given from I think CGR gave me a bunch of uh, promo stuff uh, a few years back and actually be able, was able to use that PS3 controller my PSP which hasn't gotten much love in a long time Joker always overlooking and the controller that I did a review on a few uh, maybe a, a year ago Super Mario Brothers cereal which was uh, I found that at the Berry Game Exchange, I think I paid way more than I should have for a box of cereal, but uh, it's a nice little piece of art right there. And in front of that would be a dish holder, but would normally hold my DS. I'm playing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, and that is uh, right now upstairs. My Mario 3DS and a, a few boxes here, my Xbox section here, and my iPhone and iPad and my iMac. Um, my iMac is a few years old and it serves a purpose for the editing. I had been doing it on a laptop for a while and a lot on my phone. The first maybe two or three years of this channel, I was doing a lot of editing just on my phone. Um, and then I decided to take the plunge and get an iMac, mainly for the family, but I mainly use it for just editing. Uh, back over here, I'm going to start off with these four cubes and I'm going to work my way around. Right here is my Atari 2600. Um, unfortunately it's on the fritz and, uh, it's, it's not working at all. I have to get this fixed. Um, this is my junior. I had this when I was a kid. This is not the exact one I had because I gave that away. Uh, but I rebought it again. And unfortunately this one's on the fritz. My Sega Genesis, again, the same thing, gave it away and I had to rebuy it again. But, uh, this one does work. Um, I have it connected to my old, my old TV down the bottom, the Sega Dreamcast right there. As you guys know, if you guys are familiar with this channel, I'm in love with this console and it does get a little bit of love when it comes to whenever I get a chance to come down here. I tend to put a game in and just, you know, go on and play and enjoy what I can. Right below that is my PS1. Uh, it's not connected just because I have my PS2 right there and with the PS2 Slim right above it. Uh, my PS2, I get, it's backwards compatible. It does DVDs. And uh, I use that majority to play any, you know, PS1 games in my PS2 system right there. Uh, right below that is a PS3 Slim. And unfortunately, that's not connected as well. Uh, when I did my setup for this basement, I just, I just put this down uh, because it was upstairs in my living room. And I just brought it down to serve a purpose. And uh, because my PS4 would be there, I never got back to actually connecting that back up for any particular reason, but my PS4 would typically go right there. Right here is a Toshiba 32 inch. This is something I got when uh, me and my wife got married. And uh, as you can see, I have a switcher box right below there and a switcher and HDMI switch box there with some LED lights. You guys see that normally in all my background videos. Uh, there's a switcher I got from Amazon. So basically all those things there I got from Amazon. My 20 inch, Magnasonic television that I play most of my retro games on. I connect my Genesis, my Dreamcast, my NES, my N64, uh, anything that's pretty much composite, uh, I connect through there. And I know I can go to component or even higher HDMI and all that for all these systems, but I'm not the type of person that is really interested in the graphic fidelity 
because when I grew up, we didn't really pay attention to that as much as just playing the game. So I just st stick to this, uh, this 20 inch flat screen and uh, it works pretty well. Right below that is uh, my storage boxes for controllers and a whole bunch of you know useless stuff. And uh, below that is my Sony surround sound that you guys see uh, there. Right now I have connected two of my speakers and unfortunately I just have the front facing speakers for me. Uh, right there is my NES. This is my original NES. I got this, I believe in 1988 for a birthday. My parents got me this and I'm, I couldn't be happier when I got this. Uh, I had my Atari 2600 for like two or three years prior to that. And uh, everybody was already on to the NES at this point or Sega Master System, but most of my friends were on the NES. And I've played so many games and so many memories on this console. Uh, it's, it's up there as one of my favorites, but uh, you know, the Dreamcast, because of the amount of games I bought personally, you know, when you, when you decide to grab games and buy them yourself out of pocket, you have to you know, pick and choose which games you think are going to be good. NES was games that were given to me as gifts and stuff like that. So some, some of these games that I got weren't as good as, you know, you would hope to be, but this is one of my second favorite consoles. Uh, right there is my N64. This is my original N64 as well. Uh, played a lot of games uh, on this as well. A lot of wrestling, a lot of nights of 007 and uh, wrestling WCW uh, Revenge or WCW versus NWO or even WWF WrestleMania. Right below that is my GameCube and my Wii. Uh, my GameCube is not connected mainly because my Wii is backwards compatible. If you guys have a Wii like this, it is backwards compatible. So I play a lot of my Wii games and my uh, GameCube games on there um, whenever I get a chance to. Right beside that is just a miscellaneous shelf of Mario and uh, McDonald's toys that I grabbed or had and that fit, uh, that fit the bill pretty good for the, for the section. And... Um, it's, you know, I, I like the way it looks here. It's like my little NES or my little Nintendo Nook. And as you can see, the other one's a PlayStation Nook. And my other one was my first console's pretty much ever Nook. And this one is the Xbox little Nook. Uh, falls, uh, falls the theme there. My uh, original Xbox right now, it's on the fritz. I don't know if it's a hard drive issue or what, but it doesn't power on. It doesn't do anything. And I got to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, beside that is my Xbox 360 Slim. I use that mainly as a Netflix machine down here. Um, I don't, because most of the games are backwards compatible on the Xbox One, which I have that up in the living room. So this is uh, a main Netflix machine for down here because my Xbox One is in the living room and that's where that would go. Right beside that is a Halo 3 helmet with some Fallout, uh, I think poker chips. I don't remember where I got those. Um, but that helmet is my original helmet from when I got Halo 3 and uh, standing in line waiting for, you know, this anticipation at midnight and then you actually get this and you're walking out with this giant box hoping that nobody, you know, robs it from you because it spent quite a bit of money back then for this little helmet. But um, it's a nice little addition to the, you know, Xbox theme there. Uh, right here is uh, like some sports memorabilia. I have a lot of sports memorabilia. As you can see in that corner there, that's where gonna, my bar is going to go. And uh, I have a lot of sports memorabilia in those boxes and stuff like that. So I'm a Red Wings fan, if you guys didn't know. So I have a lot of Red Wings memorabilia and, uh, and stuff like that. I'm also a Vikings fan for the NFL. Um, a lot of these things are pretty cool that I got over the years. That is from Ted Lindsay. He signed it when I went to go watch a Red Wings game. This is to my daughter and to my both my daughters. He signed to Isabella and Alexandra. So getting that was pretty cool. And uh, and that's that. So like I probably want to do some LEDs in there, but I'm not sure if I'm going to. But uh, yeah, that's where that's going to go. That you know, have a whole bunch of sports memorabilia going in that corner there. Back over here, a lot of people were commenting and asking, you know, how do I sit down and play my games? Because everybody thought my setup was too far from the couch. As you can see, it's really not. My couch is a little bit messy. I'm trying to figure out my HD uh, recorder right there. I'm trying to figure that out. And uh, whenever I get a chance to getting that done this year, hopefully uh, sooner than later. Right there is my Canon uh, T5i with um, a Rode mic on top and my tripod on top of the couch. Uh, I do typically take it down, but when I shoot, I, I, I'm the only one that really comes down this basement, so this couch really just stays the same, as you see, minus the mess on it. Uh, but the tripod typically stays the same. 
those lights, as cheap as they are, they uh, serve a purpose. They do some, you know, decent lighting. I got these, I think, at a Goodwill or a thrift shop or some sort, and um, they uh, didn't have those boxes. I made those boxes after the fact because I'm on the budget, and they do serve a purpose. They're plugged in right now. Uh, right here is my desk where I do all my editing, and this is where the miracle happens. It's a little bit messy, but uh, that the little blue book there is my, you know, memories of uh, games and stuff like that. I jot down a memorable, uh, like a little bit of an idea of what type of video I want to shoot, and I jot down a few ideas in there. As you can see, there my switch there, and now back to the consoles and the games that I have here. Uh, the up top there is my Dreamcast collection, and uh, this is not all of them. A lot of the holes that are missing there are games. Not a lot. All the holes that are missing there are the games that I'm planning on doing a video on in the new year. And uh, yeah, so like I take out an idea or a, a few games for an idea, and then I you know write a script or write a generalized idea of what I want to do, and I shoot it, and then whenever I'm done with it, I put it back. But I'll do a quick little pan here. There. A lot of uh, bigger games are on the table, uh, like the heavier hitters of Dreamcast games are on the table, but there are so many great, great titles on that. Being that there are about 247 uh, titles in the, the library, and that's not including uh, you know variants and stuff like that, but with that many games or that little games at least 80 percent of the console's library is fantastic it's so good some ports are better on the dreamcast than any other ports on any other system and um as you can see there right there the reason why that game right there that's shenmue uh the reason why that's out because i've been in the middle of playing it and whenever i play a game and i know that's not in the console or into the in the game cartridge or whatever I typically leave it out so uh, just a mental reminder to you know put it back in uh, right here's my small ps1 collection metal gear is my you know mainstay uh, final fantasy 7 is also another mainstay there but I don't really play or collect too much playstation 1 unless I find it on the dirt cheap uh, I try to keep my money for uh, you know the dreamcast so if I do collect anything it's dreamcast or current gen stuff uh, right here is my N64. It is a small library, but there are a lot of great games in here and one big, big heavy hitter, which I'm really happy that I have that in a collection. That's Play Fighter Sculptor's Cut and uh, getting that for like $2.50 back in the day. This is going back three, four years ago. Getting that for that cheap of a price was a great grab. If you guys uh, aren't familiar with that, I was giddy and I was shaking when I grabbed that from the Goodwill. It was crazy. Um, right there is my NES, about 30-something games. A um, little bit of... I try to grab the games that I like to grab. Not I'm not trying to pick up just about anything. Uh, you know, good games that I would like to play with my kids or with myself. Um, so I got some Adventure Island there, Blades of Steel, uh, you know, Contra, The Goonies 2, which is okay. Uh, Mickey Mouse Capade, I like that just because it's a simple game. Um, the, all three, I don't have it right there, it's in the NES, but all three Mario's, Star Tropics, and then you got the Turtles games there, and uh, right above that is my Game Boy collection. I made those just because I, I like the way they look. I didn't want to put them in a binder or anything like that, so I figured that this is the best way to display them and make them look good, so uh, I did that on my printer and it served the purpose. My small 3DS collection, if I can grab them on the super cheap, like $5 or less, then I'll grab it. But most of the time, I never find them for $5 or less, so that's why I never grab it. Uh, right beside that is my GameCube. Um, again, another console that unless I find the game super cheap, I'm not picking them up. My Wii collection, same thing. Most of these consoles, like I said, unless I find them really, really cheap or I can try to flip them or whatever, I try not to grab too much of them unless I, I can get them like for, you know, two, three dollars a pop, but not much of that happens. Uh, my 360 collection, uh, Gears of War, another mainstay of that console. I love the Gears of War, especially the part one. It was my favorite one. Halo, I have to have Halo as one of my staples for the Xbox as well. It's such a great uh, series of games and uh, it's something that 
uh, I had so much time and memories with uh, when I was playing with, you know, a few guys and just tearing it up. It was such a blast. My Xbox One, my measly Xbox One collection, uh, Halo 5 in there, Bioshock, which I just finished last year, Gears of War 4, which I'm glad to have finished that and picked that up, Titanfall and Titanfall 2, my PlayStation 2 collection, very measly. Um, it's about maybe 40 or 50 games, but, you know, again, some games I don't want to grab unless I can find them really cheap. So Destroy All Humans, Dragon Age 8, um, Final Fantasy X, The Grand Theft Autos, Metal Gear Solid 2, which uh, I really did enjoy that game. Uh, people didn't like Raiden. I, di I didn't mind him. I found him kind of annoying, but didn't ruin my experience of the entire game. Resident Evil games, the Shadow Colossus I beat this year. Um, my PS3 collection, mostly Call of Duties and, and Uncharted's there. Grand Theft Auto 5, and I also have it on the PS4. Don't know why I have, still have it on the PS3, but... I know that I wouldn't get anything for it on the PS3, so I just might as well keep it um, right there. My Switch collection, which is pretty decent in game uh, titles, like they're they're some of the best ones that are on this console. The the Switch is becoming one of my favorite consoles, and picking up the games uh, because the Nintendo tax is a little bit hard to do now because uh, you know Nintendo doesn't tend to drop their prices of games. And unless I find them super cheap or on sale, I don't really pick many up. But right now I have Smash Brothers that's in the console right now. And I also have uh, Fire Emblem Legends or Fire Emblem something or other. I don't remember. I picked it up for like $9 over on Boxing Day and it still hasn't gone into the system there. My Genesis collection, very small. I never find those ever in the wild. It's, it's ridiculous especially in my area here, my boxed Atari, my only boxed Atari game. I also have it loose there. Um, my Space Invaders and my Pac-Man, they're just going to stay in there because they're not very good from what I've seen in reviews and all that. They do have legitimate sounds, but who cares? Um, right there, my DS and Switch cases, some Cade 6, some Destiny stuff, my color changing mugs, um, and a bunch of other stuff, random stuff, that CD cleaner and all that. Right there is my Dreamcast table that I customized. It's just an Ikea table that I painted and I just did a little project on. I was going to actually do a, a video on that a while back when I first made it, but it didn't turn out as well as I thought. Um, this is my Dreamcast table and some uh, some magazines down below. Uh, right there is my Sonic Adventure Limited Edition in a shadow box. I also have a Canon spike that would go where the laptop is, but it's being uh, used for a video. Right above that is a Scarface and uh, Scarface The World Is Yours PS2 game. I, I had that loose, so I figured that I might as well use that and tie that in pretty good to something. Blockbuster rewards cards because, uh, you know, everybody remembers Blockbuster, but not many people have anything that's still uh, of those days. And that was pretty cool. I found that in one of my DVDs. I opened it up and there it was. The NES Club and Nintendo Quest. This is Jay Bartlett and Rob McCollum's documentary that they did a quest to try to complete uh the nes in 30 days so 30 days 678 games and 10,000 miles um the nintendo quest was a pretty cool documentary that i did watch and uh i was able to interview jay a few times and uh ask him a few questions about the documentary which is pretty cool uh, beside that is my my uh, DVD collection, and it is about spending about 200 or something DVDs uh, in my inset boxes and um, a few other Blu-rays, small little collection of Blu-rays and box sets and stuff like that. This is my CD collection from high school, and you know, off CDs obviously now nobody really buys them that much, and you can get them for you know 25 cents each. But these are the CDs I had from when I was a kid. A lot of them sticking out, as you can see there. The reason is because I don't have the CDs anymore. I must have lost them in the moves and stuff like that. And a few other little things over here. Books and my Pokemon and uh, Transformers movie. That's Those are my stuff when I was a kid. Uh, right here is a eBay section. This is what I use to sell on eBay. Uh, whenever I get something new, I try to flip it if I can. And... Um, I use this as my, my storage for eBay stuff. I also have some more stuff over there. And uh, a few, you know, I'm the one who knocks, uh, Breaking Bad, but there's a few more listed stuff over there. 
Over here is my comic book section, and I'm going to do a change on that. Uh, that's why I have some corner rounds there. I'm planning on changing something for these comics. I'm not digging this whole area right now. I'm contemplating keeping the shelf for memorabilia, but the comics, I think I want to do something else with, and I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. Uh, Superman is my favorite uh, comic book character, as you can see there. So there's a few little things of Superman, cereal, and stuff like that when they had the promotion for Batman versus Superman and a basketball, which was something my mom got me, I don't know, a few years back and it just sits there now. Over here is my music section and uh, it's mostly for uh, LPs. It's an old, this, this record player is from 1970, I think 1978. Uh, my dad restores it and he gave it to me, but unfortunately... Uh, he didn't have the knowledge to um, restore the LP player. So right now having some, like the speakers are on the fritz. They play, they sound, but it's like there's quite a bit of distortion on it. So I only play it if I'm ever down here because it's not very, you know, appealing to the ears. So for me, it's okay if I do play the Beatles or anybody. Um, it's okay for me and it serves a purpose. And uh, that's basically it. That is the man cave, my man cave for this year, basically. It does uh, serve a purpose. I do use it regularly whenever I get a chance. And um, that's it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks, guys.